there's still a lot of destroyed cups up here, but I like it. Great game. I love it. Well, inside out, welcome. If this is your first time, we're so glad you're here. Uh, we hope at some point you make uh, a point tonight to get connected, to come back, officially get involved at Inside Out. If we haven't yet met, my name is Beth, and tonight we are kicking off a brand new series where for the next couple of weeks, we're going to be talking about uh, the friendships in our life uh, and really ultimately how we can make those friendships better. And when it comes to uh, really the idea of, of friendships, growing up, I had a pretty clear picture of what adult friendships would look like in my life. Like I had a picture uh, of what my friend group was going to look like. I had a picture uh, of what life really in general life was going to be like by the time that I like got out of my parents' house and I was on my own. And my whole vision for how my life was going to go, what my friendships were going to look like, uh, all was dictated by the best 90s sitcom ever made, this show right here, Friends. Does anybody else watch this show? One applause, different parks. Okay, a few of you. If you have never watched Friends, it is like a piece of American history. Like, you've got to watch it. Like, it is one of the best shows ever created. Uh, I grew up, I mean, it was made when I was, like, way too young to be watching it, so it wasn't until I was older that I watched Friends, but it's become one of my like comfort shows, you know, the shows that you can just watch all the time or that you can put on in the background that you don't really have to pay attention to, but you have it playing while you're doing stuff because you just like having it on in the background. I have two. One of them is Friends. The other one is, this one is very underrated, but Reba. Has anyone ever watched the show Reba? <laughs> yes. Who knows the theme song? You guys know it. Yes. A single mom who works too hard. Keep going. Somebody. Who loves her kids and never stops? It's so good. <laughs> Here you go. uh, Friends, it's harder to watch. Reba, it's on Netflix right now. I've been binging it. So if you need some new shows to watch, highly recommend Friends, Reba, go watch them. But Friends, if you haven't watched it before, if you don't really like know the premises of the show, uh, it's about five friends who live in New York City and like they're all roommates or like live across the hall from each other. Their apartment building's like really close to each other. They all live very close to each other. And they do everything together, everything. Like they're always with each other. They hang out all the time. Uh, they even have like a central coffee shop where they'll all go to and just like meet each other there and hang out. And like they're never alone. They always have somebody to do something with. And like their lives seemed awesome. And I had built up in my head this idea of like, oh, that's what I'm going to get one day. Like one day, like I'm going to have a group of friends like that. One day my life is going to be like that. And then I very quickly realized that friendships like that, a life like that doesn't just happen. And whether or not you've ever seen the show, like I'm sure you have ideas of like what you hope for in the friendships that you want. Like, we all want friends that you can count on to call anytime you need someone. Like, wouldn't it be nice to live a life where you never felt lonely because you had people around you that you were surrounded by that you were so close with? To have people that have, like, seen you at your best and seen you at your worst and still choose to, like, stick around and be there for you. Like, those loyal to the end types of friends. I think we all hope for those friendships, but I would guess that a lot of you have already discovered at this point in your life that actually getting those types of friendships is pretty rare. And maybe you've had a friend like that, and then somehow you lost the friend like that, and you're trying to figure out how to get a friendship like that back. Maybe some of you are actually in it right now, like you feel like you have really great friends, and it's like figuring out, okay, how do we keep this tight-knit group together? Or maybe others of you, you look at your life and you look at the people around you and you think, why does it seem so easy for everyone else to make and keep really great friends, but friendships have become so difficult for me? The reality is, like, actually having really great friendships is pretty rare. And it's rare for a lot of reasons. Like, there's a million things we could talk about of why that is pretty rare, but tonight I want us to think and talk about just one of the reasons. Because when it comes to the friendships in our life, we can think about the types of friends we want. 
We often think about what we would hope for in a friend, but we don't always think about what we bring to the equation. And in every friendship, there's two people involved. There's somebody else and there's you. And we can often very easily list out what we would want in the someone else, that we want someone who's loyal, we want someone who cares about us, we want somebody who thinks about our interests, like we want somebody that we can call on when we need them. But we don't always think about what we bring to the table or what we are like on the other side of that friendship. And the reality is that having great friends is much different than being a great friend. And so for tonight, I want us to talk about what it looks like to be a great friend. That I don't want you tonight to evaluate the other people in your life. That tonight, I actually want you to take some time to think about you. To evaluate the way that you show up in your friendships. And so to figure out exactly what it looks like to be a great friend, which there could be a million definitions of what that looks like, For us tonight to figure that out, we're going to look at something that the Apostle Paul wrote uh, in his letter to the church at Philippi. And in a portion of this letter, Paul talks about uh, the idea of humility. And while Paul's lens that he's writing is through the lens of humility, I think if we were to take his wisdom and we were to take his advice and we were to apply it to the friendships and the relationships in our life, I think it would make a massive difference. Because my hope for every single one of you is that you would actually have deep, life-giving, meaningful friendships in your life. But in order to do that, it takes us figuring out what it looks like to actually be a great friend. And here's what Paul has to say. He says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. So do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. In other words, stop thinking about just you. And I feel like this concept is something that we all know that we should do. It's like the golden rule, like treat others the way that you should be treated. It's it's something that we all know that we should do, but it's not always something that we actually do. Because for most of us, our our natural tendency, the natural way that we're going to bend is we're going to think about what benefits me, what's convenient for me, how how do people show up for me, how does this affect my reputation, how does this affect my status, what can people do to make me feel cared for, what can people do to make me feel valued, what can people do to make me feel important, and if we're not careful, if we're not paying attention to it, then our tendency is going to be to lean in to selfishness rather than leaning in thinking about the interests of others. And for me, this became abundantly clear that I have the tendency to lean this way in friendships about, it's probably like seven years ago. About seven years ago, I I was challenged um, in my job to do a really, really big self-evaluation. And the way that this evaluation worked is that you sent a questionnaire that people uh, filled out anonymously. So I didn't know who wrote in what. I didn't know who said what. But this questionnaire, it got sent to all my coworkers. It got sent to my boss. It got sent to my friends. It got sent to my roommates. Uh, It got sent to people that I consider mentors. And the whole point was for them to answer questions and uh, write answers in that basically they, they were giving me feedback about myself. They were evaluating me as a person. And that's terrifying. I want you to imagine somebody sending a questionnaire to basically every single person that you know that's basically asking them, hey, what do you think about fill in your name? It's terrifying. So this questionnaire went out to basically everyone that I knew. And then after this questionnaire goes out, uh, you then meet with somebody whose job is they go through all of the answers and they start to pick out themes of feedback for you. And so you don't know who said what, you don't know where the feedback came from, but they pick out themes. And there's good things, like they tell you things that you're doing really well, but then they also pick out themes of like, hey, a whole bunch of people pointed out 
that you tend to act this way or you tend to do this thing and it's an area of growth, something that you should work on. And this evaluation was seven years ago and there are still two comments that I remember that stuck out. And there were other things that went with these comments, but, but these two comments were a general theme. And here were two of the comments. Somebody said, I feel like Beth is less interested in my life than I am in hers. And somebody else said, I wish Beth would ask me more questions about my life. Which maybe don't seem like that harsh, but when this has been sent to the people that like, you spend every day with, some people that I lived with, people that I would like consider my closest friends that I went to church with, like in the moment hearing that, it stung. Like it was really hard to hear. And at first, I wanted to just get defensive. At first, I I was offended that anyone would write that. But then I quickly realized that like this was pretty eye-opening feedback for me. That, That somehow in my friendships, I had drifted towards selfishness, and I, I had missed out on getting curious and really thinking about the other people that were on the other side of that friendship. And I wasn't trying to be selfish. I just wasn't actively thinking about not. And so in just naturally thinking about what benefited me, And naturally thinking about what was convenient to me, what I was ultimately doing was I was communicating to my friends, I was communicating to the people in my life that I didn't value them. And that wasn't true, but it's how they felt. Because like Paul wrote, I hadn't taken the time to to turn to, to think about the interests of others. And after getting this feedback, I knew that, that this was feedback that I never wanted to get again. That I didn't want people in my life to feel this way. I didn't want people to think that, that I didn't value them, that, that I didn't have interest in what they were interested in, that I didn't care about them, that I wasn't curious about their life. I didn't want people in my life to feel that way. And as I've grown and gone through the years, am I a perfect friend? Absolutely not, because I'm human, and my tendency is always going to be to lean towards selfishness. It's always something that we are fighting against. But what I ultimately know is that what Paul wrote, I want to be true of me. And when I think about the fact that that I would consider myself a Jesus follower— I know that living this way is a rapport reflection of Jesus to the people around me. But it's one thing to just know that we shouldn't be selfish, that we shouldn't be just thinking about ourselves, that we shouldn't just be thinking about what benefits us. It's one thing to know that. It's another thing to know what to do in order to combat that. But Paul follows up what he talks about in this passage in Philippians. He follows it up and tells us exactly how to go about doing that. He says this. He says, In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. He continues. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. He continues on. He says, Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him to the name and gave him the name that is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the God the Father. And so Paul he goes on to explain the reality of who Jesus is. But what I want us to focus on is what Paul starts this passage with. So he starts his passage with this in your relationships with one another have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. That if you want friendships that are deep, if you want friendships that are meaningful, if you want friendships that are going to last, if you want friendships that aren't just one-sided, well, then that means taking on the mindset of Jesus. And what does it look like? What does it mean to take on the mindset of Jesus in our friendships and our relationships? 
Well, Jesus, he was full of compassion and empathy. That's how he always responded. He responded with compassion. He responded with empathy. That Jesus himself was, was curious with the people that he interacted with. He asked questions. He wanted to know them. He wanted to understand them. That Jesus, he, he was forgiving, the most forgiving. And that Jesus himself, he was humble. That Jesus, being fully God and fully man, he didn't demand that people come and serve him. Instead, he chose to go and serve those around him. That Jesus ultimately cared for us more than he cared about what benefited him. You see, taking on the mindset of Jesus means walking, modeling after the way of Jesus. And if that were to show up in our friendships, if that were to show up in our relationships, then it would mean that you think about others more than you think about you. And some of you might hear this and think, hey, I've done this in friendships in the past. Like I've gone all in on caring for someone else and, and constantly showing up for them. And I've gone out of my way to make sure they have what they need. And, and I'm always making sure that like I'm doing what makes my friends happy and I don't ever get it in return. I'm not talking about that kind of friendship. I'm not talking about staying in, in, in a toxic friendship where it's just one-sided and you are just like driving yourself into the ground trying to like prove to somebody the type of friend that you are. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about in our friendships where you value someone and you know that they value you and, and you know those types of friendships that I'm talking about, that in those friendships that you would think about them more than you think about you that you would think about the interests of your friends, that you would think about the needs of your friends, that you would think about what it looks like to respond with compassion and empathy, that you would be the kind of friend that is quick to forgive, that you would be the kind of friend that, that in humility serves the people around you, that, that it's not caring for yourself, but it's knowing that we're at our best when we're choosing to care for and serve one another. And taking on this mindset, being this kind of friend, it requires some work. It's difficult. And there's probably stuff that every single one of us in the room has to figure out or has to understand about ourselves to know where in the areas of our friendships do we need to put our selfishness aside and instead take on the mindset of Jesus. And so to figure out what that looks like for you, I want to challenge you to do a far more simple version of what I did years ago. What I want for each of you is, is to challenge you to start by asking yourself this question. What is it like on the other side of me? That would you take the time to evaluate what kind of friend are you? What is it like to be my friend? What is it like on the other side of me? Like, if you were to hang out with your friends, does that only happen if they reach out to you? Or are you the type of friend that reaches out to your friends to hang out? And when it comes to being your friend, or are, are you somebody that, that pays attention to the needs of your friends? You know when they're having a bad day, and, and you ask them about it, and you care about it. Or are you the kind of friend that maybe just brushes off other people's feelings, but you're quick to, jump, to dump your own drama or your own venting on the people around you? Like, take the time to evaluate what kind of friend am I? What is it like on the other side of me? And then, if you would have the boldness and the courage, what would it look like to ask this question to the people around you? What would it look like to ask your friends, to, to ask your small group, to ask your small group leaders, maybe even ask your parents, or to even ask a coach to ask them, hey, what is it like on the other side of me. And that can be scary. It can be terrifying because you don't know what you're going to get. But I would guess that you're going to get two things. If you were to ask people in that life your question, you're going to hear some things about yourself that you didn't know were true. And some of those are going to be positive. There's going to be ways that you show up. There's going to be things about the way that people think about you that are going to shock you in a really good way. And it's going to be encouraging and it's going to be motivating to keep going. But you might also hear some things that, that challenge some stuff in your life. 
some things that might cause you to want to get defensive at first. But if ultimately, if ultimately our hope is to have life-giving friendships that make it, that last the distance, friendships that aren't just one-sided, but friendships that are meaningful, friendships that are life-giving, friendships that we hope are going to stand the test of time, then hearing that feedback about ourselves is worth it because ultimately it will make the friendships and the relationships in our lives better. And so would you start this week by just asking, what is it like on the other side of me? And as you begin to answer that question or to get responses from people, instead of getting defensive, what would it look like to lay those things down and in humility choose to say, hey, I know that I'm not perfect, but I'm going to work to take on the mindset of Christ, knowing that you're going to have friendships and relationships for the rest of your life. And the better foundation you can set now, the better your future will be. I'd love to pray for us. Then you guys can head. Small group. Heavenly Father, God, thank you that you created us for relationship. And God, sometimes they can feel really messy. Sometimes we're in a place where we would just long for a friend. And so, God, I pray that wherever students are uh, tonight, that, 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 Father, that they would have the wisdom um, to know how to implement this truth. That, God, even if they feel like they're struggling in friendships, that, God, we can all work now to to put on the mindset of you, to live and model in your ways. That, God, we should do that. We can do that regardless of if we have a bunch of friends in our life or we're just longing for one friend in our life. But, God, would you help us to know what it looks like to show up for others the way that you showed up for us. And in doing that, God, I pray that we would see the benefit of meaningful, life-giving, long-lasting friendships. Because, God, when you're at the center and when our mindset is you, when our focus is you, God, it makes all the difference. Father, we love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.